Hello, and welcome to another installment of the Washburn Experience. The founding of Washburn proved to be challenging, but with persistence and purpose, Washburn continued to thrive. In the first 50 years of Washburn University, we saw the development of the theme Non Nobis Solum, not for ourselves alone. Professor of English Charlotte Levitt suggested that the college adopt this founding principle as its motto in the early 1900s. Now we see this theme continue to guide the staff and students as the campus grows. The year is 1915, and although it's a time for reflection, it's an even greater time for celebration. Washburn celebrated its 50th anniversary during commencement week with many activities, including an elaborate pageant. Costume community groups and alumni depicted Kansas and Washburn history. Groups of students represented each department of the college with costumes, props, songs, and dances. 90 students received degrees, more than the total number of students who graduated in the first 25 years. One of these students was Mamie Williams, who taught for many years in Topeka Public Schools and for whom Williams Elementary School is named. Another was Ray Garvey, who with his wife Olive, also a Washburn graduate, established the Garvey Scholarships and supported several buildings on campus. Yet another was Louis Lloyd Larrick, who died just three years later in the service of his country. His family placed the bench on campus in his memory. During World War I, many Washburn students and faculty enlisted, and some gave the ultimate sacrifice. A 120-member ambulance company deployed from Washburn College and served in France for a year. In 1918, a National Student Army Training Corps was organized on campus so that students could stay in school while training for the war effort. In fact, the law school moved to campus from its downtown location so the law students could participate in the military training. As the war ended, the influenza epidemic closed the school for a few months. These perilous times also exemplified the motto of the Washburn Family Coat of Arms, which the college had adopted as the official school crest in 1917. Purificatus non consumptus, which means purified, not consumed. During this time, the private preparatory school operated by Washburn, known as the Academy, graduated its last class in June of 1918. In the fall, Washburn Rule, a public high school, opened in its place and continued to hold classes on campus until 1940. As the 1920s roared, so did Washburn College. Enrollment had decreased during World War I, but increased to 937 students in the fall of 1920, and to 1,381 students by 1925. Kappa Alpha Theta and Alpha Phi sororities built houses on the west side of the campus in 1922 and 1923. Benton Hall was built as a women's residence hall in 1923, and the Mulvane Art Museum opened in 1924. Phi Delta Theta and Alpha Delta fraternities built houses on the east side of the campus in 1927 and 1929, and both Moore Bowl and Whiting Field House were constructed in 1928. The Epsilon chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha was established on the Washburn campus in 1923, and the Rho chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi came under the supervision of Washburn in 1932. With the sororities and fraternities taking a more active role in student life, many new traditions became established, such as Mayfay and the Petty Pant Prom. The campus held its first homecoming in the fall of 1928. Student life was vibrant and fun. Athletics were an integral part of campus life as well. Washburn had sports teams that competed in baseball, basketball, football, golf, tennis, and track. And women could participate in intramural sports such as tennis, hockey, volleyball, basketball, dancing, and swimming. The men's basketball team won conference championships in 1925, 26, and 29. The men's football team won conference championships in 1921, 30, and 31. In 1925, Washburn entered the National AAU Tournament at Kansas City, playing the Hilliards of St. Joseph, Missouri for the championship. The whole school traveled to Kansas City to watch and cheer the men on to victory. Academic opportunities expanded to keep pace with the growing student body in campus. 
an American citizenship department conceived by President Womer and funded by Worcester, Massachusetts manufacturer George Alden, opened in 1926. The program, which focused on history and government, was the first of its kind in the country. Carl Minninger, who began his college career at Washburn, completed degrees in the East and returned to teach psychology courses part-time while working with his father and brother to establish the Minninger Clinic. By the end of the decade, the 1,300 students could complete training in engineering, journalism, home economics, business, nursing, and pre-medicine, or pursue a degree in the more traditional areas of the sciences, humanities, music, art, and law, taught by over 75 faculty members. I'm told that the early and mid-twenties were a great time to be on campus at Washburn College. Several things that people remembered and talked about were the beanies that underclassmen had to wear, the required chapel assemblies in McVicker Chapel and the Hobo Day, which began in 1916 to generate pep and school spirit for the football game with KU. Student organizations like the YM and YWCA and the Blue Peppers were popular. The college grew, the Topeka community grew, the students had fun, and some lasting traditions were begun. In 1929, the U.S. stock market crashed and with it began the Great Depression. Throughout the 1920s, Washburn College had already experienced decreased support from the Congregational Church. But during the Depression era of the 1930s, things became much worse financially. Investment income declined, student enrollment dropped considerably, and the college was forced to use its endowment reserves. The only major construction during this time was financed with private funds. In 1931, President Womer stepped down from the presidency to teach in the American Citizenship Department. Through a mutually beneficial understanding, he built and lived in a Spanish-style house on campus which became university property after both he and his wife died. It is now known as the International House. Also in 1931, a Topeka businessman designed a nine-hole golf course on the southern and western areas of the campus, the first at a Midwest college. Two more sororities built houses on the campus, Zeta Tau Alpha in 1930 and Delta Gamma in 1937, completing what was called Sorority Row. Another piece of good news, Washburn finally got a mascot in 1938. Alumnus Bradbury Thompson designed the first representation of the Ichabod, and it was introduced in that year's Caw Yearbook. On February 6, 1940, even as World War II was being waged in Europe, the college celebrated Washburn Day in its 75th year with a birthday dinner for over 1,000 alumni and friends and a radio broadcast on WIVW. The culmination of the Diamond Jubilee year was held during the commencement week. The three-day celebration was neither lavish nor elaborate, but was intended to be fitting and meaningful to all who attended. Little did they know what changes were in store for Washburn in the next few years. Just a few months later, President Philip King and the Board of Trustees announced that the college couldn't continue to operate unless an alternative financial solution could be found. A committee of 100 alumni, friends, and community members studied the options and reported that the best plan was to offer the campus to the city of Topeka and become a municipal university. Washburn College was significant to the Topeka community, so in April 1941, the citizens of Topeka voted overwhelmingly to support the college with property taxes. On July 1, 1941, just five months before Pearl Harbor, Washburn College became Washburn Municipal University of Topeka. With this new infusion of financial help, Washburn was able to lower tuition and attract more students. Soon after the country entered World War II, Washburn became a Navy V-5 pilot training site. A Navy V-12 officer training unit was organized on the campus in the summer of 1943, and all campus housing was then claimed for military use. Carl T. Rowan, a member of the Navy V-12 training unit and the creative force behind the Voice of America broadcast had this to say about his experience at Washburn. It was here that I began to learn of the common nature and destiny of men, whatever their race or origin. It was here that I began to learn that we all share the same hopes and dreams and fears and frustrations. In 1945, facing a shortage of nurses exacerbated by World War II, the federal government established the Cadet Nurse Corps. 110 female students began their training in the Cadet Nurse Corps 
at Washburn University. World War II was a difficult time for all Americans. Everyone had to pull together. We were battling on so many fronts. Washburn provided the training that we needed at that time, and after the war was over, Washburn provided the education that we needed through the GI Bill to reestablish our country. Washburn has been a big asset to this community. Non nobis solum, not for ourselves alone. Washburn, now a public municipal university, was transformed by a sense of reinvigorated purpose. With so many married veterans returning to or starting college after the war, Veterans and Family Housing was built in 1946. An Air Force ROTC unit was established in 1947, and the Memorial Student Union was completed in 1951 as a living memorial to Washburn students and Shawnee County residents who were veterans of both world wars. A renewed interest in the arts was evident when Washburn music professor Everett Fetter founded the Topeka Symphony Orchestra in 1946. McVicker Chapel was home to their concerts for over 10 years. Morgan Hall was completed in 1955. The library moved from Carnegie to Morgan, and Carnegie was remodeled for the law school. Because enrollment continued to increase, more student housing was needed. Additional married student housing was provided in 1958, and Carruth Residence Hall for Men was built in 1959. Stouffer Science Hall was completed in 1960, although it wasn't named until 1961 after the death of President Brian Stouffer. The 1950s and 60s brought dramatic change to the country and Washburn University. Georgia Neese Clark Gray, a Washburn graduate, became the first female treasurer of the United States. In 1952, Washburn Municipal University of Topeka became Washburn University of Topeka. And two years later, on May 17, 1954, the historic Brown versus Topeka Board of Education decision was handed down by the Supreme Court. From the initial filing to the final arguments, 11 Washburn Law graduates played roles in the case. One was a judge who heard the initial case. Four represented the plaintiff, three represented the defense, and three represented the state of Kansas. Washburn athletes were again winning championships with conference titles in basketball in 1951 and 1952, and in football in 1949 1953, 1954, and 1964. In 1961, Washburn University of Topeka received state funds for the very first time. And in 1964, Washburn enrolled over 4,000 students. Tuition was $10 per credit hour for regular students, and law students paid $15 per credit hour leadership by four talented, committed university presidents ushered in an era of growth through turbulent times and completed the second 50 years of dedicated service. Non nobis solum, not for ourselves alone. At the end of this 50 year period, Washburn was once again celebrating an anniversary. The year is 1965, and Washburn University of Topeka celebrates its 100th year of the Washburn experience. The year-long celebration began in Whiting Fieldhouse with a convocation ceremony broadcast on WIBW radio and television. In the fall, 19 former homecoming queens returned to campus and rode in the largest homecoming parade in the university's history. On October 17th of that year, John Henderson was installed as Washburn's 10th president. And the faculty celebrated the end of the centennial year with an old-fashioned Christmas party, complete with food, music, parlor games, dancing, and special presentations, not knowing that one of Washburn's biggest challenges was on the horizon. Washburn University of Topeka celebrating 100 years of education and service. Non nobis solum. Non nobis solum. Non nobis solum. Non nobis solum. Not for ourselves alone. <laughs>